prompted by client Gareth Holder from Redlow Horticulture, Andy Lysart developed a machine to weed squash crops mechanically, saving time and money and delivering a more accurate outcome than traditional hand weeding. In 2014, Andy won the National Horticultural Award for Innovation and the New Zealand Launch Category at National Field Day's Mystery Creek. What I do is agricultural contracting. I was raised on a Canterbury farm, knocked around the countryside from central Otago to Namatea and places like that. Spent 20 years in the bay with a contractor, learning and harvesting all sorts of crops. And yeah, and I've just gone out on my own the last eight or nine years. This is about the ideal size you'd want to get going in, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it's a good place to start. I mean, we can get through a lot heavier. Yeah. One of my contracting clients, he was getting a bit miffed about forever having to write checks out for hand weeding and said, well, you're pretty good at knocking stuff up, so why don't you have a go? So a couple of weeks later, I gave him an idea to have a play with, and uh, that's where we've moved from there over time. We wanted something simple, and the challenge was to find a way to have a trigger mechanism that was reliable and didn't involve computers. It's for precision planted crops, so groundwork's got to be good. You know, every machine is like a baler. A baler tries to tie every knot, but doesn't always do it. Um, and this is the same, things that don't have to be perfect, but they've got to be pretty good. And jobs like pre-emerge sprays, I mean, we're quite happy if people use pre-emerge, but what we're trying to do is cut down on the labour costs because they are just going to keep going up and up and making it harder for a lot of crops to be commercially viable. In squash, they're doing it by hand, they're hand weeding, so they're putting maybe a pre-emerge spray on first, then they're trying to enter road, cultivate close to the plant and build some soil under the plants that they're trying to produce a crop. And from there, we're actually being able to weed between each plant within the crop, within the row. There are machines in Europe, but they all use vision technology. The advantage this machine has is that if there's a full canopy, we can still detect each individual plant. Nothing wrong with high accuracy uh, GPS, but that's a whole lot of, uh, I hear there's some stuff in America where they actually are mapping where every seed's placed uh, in the paddock. But if you take that point that they map where every seed is dropped and you get, say, 10% don't strike and another 20% don't uh, strike and then die, now when you weed it, you've got only, you're still going to have 20% of your paddock full of weeds because the GPS unit has told you there's supposed to be a plant there. So that's ridiculous. It's very light. You can adjust it for different crops. The principle is that we're trying to weed between this plant and that plant. The default position is that these are always closed until they're triggered by the mechanism here. They're basically just picking up on the plant itself and you can adjust the height of it to detect the plant where you need to detect it. Every time this is triggered, these automatically go open, close. So as soon as the plants pass through that point, they've gone from the open position to the closed position. We've got a unit in Pukekohe being tested by some Pukekohe growers to test it on other crops such as lettuces cabbages and collies and there's a nursery that I'm investigating. I think the technology is pretty much on the money now. It's all about learning what type of knives suit different crops. Lettuces don't like soil being thrown up under their leaves. It creates sclerotinia. Um, uh, squash, getting a bit of a hilling back after we've done it, actually holds the plant in the wind. So there's horses for courses and we've just got to learn all those courses and best way to do that is actually give it to the growers that have got the different crops. Certainly squash is quite susceptible to weed pressure, so we want to make sure we've got a crop that's relatively clean early on, otherwise it can be smothered out and we tend to get poorer, smaller fruit and uh, makes it very hard from a harvesting perspective to harvest the crop. Traditionally it's um, in and around the plant, it's been hand hoeing, so using manual labour. Um, which is typically very expensive. For a long time we use inter-row cultivation, which is you know, readily available, but around immediately around the plant, and if the crop establishes and the weeds establish at the same time, the weeds tend to grow over the top and overshadow. The big thing was about trying to reduce the overall cost of production, and you know, certainly the margins and returns on particular pumpkins is getting smaller and smaller as our exchange rate was climbing. 
It's always been a dream, you know, for a grower to be able to weed between the plants mechanically. You know, it does make life a lot easier. And certainly what Andy's developed and, and the, the subsequent prototypes and, and that, you know, the machine's getting better and better and, you know, the accuracy has been fantastic. So couldn't ask for really anything more. It's usually been between $200 to $400 a hectare to hand weed. Um, that's continually rising as the base wage is, is continually starting to rise. Um, in relation to the machinery, I, I, I would see there's probably you know, $40, $50 a hectare saving there. Um, I think it's more than that when you add in the, the associated costs of managing those staff and, uh, and you know, like I was saying before, health and safety side of things. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.